So that debate was a disaster. We learn nothing. The real housewives make more sense than that. Literally. Bring it, Tim. You get it, You done. hung them on your, your, your curtains. I, they your were curtains. there before I even showed up at the residence. Excuse, Excuse me. me. Excuse, Excuse me. Not. Thank you for speaking while I'm interrupting. Literally. While I'm speaking. Well, literally. No, you said by the people. If I may finish. You can't be on both sides. You debate, Gentlemen, you'll, you'll have your turn. Republicans want Trump. Last night was filler. It looks like The Bachelor. You know, when the guy knows who he's going to propose to early, but he still has to suffer through rose ceremonies. Trump took Republicans to the fantasy suite last night. For decades, you've watched rotten and crooked politicians like Biden treat American jobs as disposable and American workers as expendable. They sat back and got rich by taking bribes to let other countries rape and pillage our jobs and our wealth. That's what happened. Joe Biden claims to be the most pro-union president in history. Nonsense. His think of it, his entire career, just think of it, his entire career has been an act of economic treason and union destruction. But crooked Joe Biden is back like a wretched old vulture trying to finish off his prey. That Trump wins. Crisp, colorful, graphic depictions of Biden that have a story arc, easy to follow. Trump's flying above the primary and attacking the head of the snake. Joe Biden came to Michigan to pose for photos at the picket line. But it's his policies that send Michigan auto workers to the unemployment line. Biden's mandate isn't a government regulation. It's a government assassination of your jobs and of your industry. The auto industry is being assassinated. Under a Trump administration, gasoline engines will be allowed. And sex changes for children will be banned. Is that okay? I think we have there it is. Biden is the extremist. That's the framing. A phony villain holding a blowhorn for an 80-second photo op. Trump's going right at the heart of the Biden brand. But it was the men and women who got every single day. They got up and came back home with grease on their hands, and they were the ones that paid the price. They paid a big, big price. The only time Joe Biden has ever gotten his hands dirty is when he's taking cash from foreign countries, which is quite often, actually. Joe Biden only cares about enriching his own family. I care about enriching your family. So the rope-a-dope is over. Trump's right square in the middle of the ring now. And COVID can't save Biden. This is the fight. This MAGA threat is a threat to the brick and mortar of our democratic institutions. But it's also a threat to the character of our nation. This MAGA threat, come on. We know the drill. This is how Biden's framing the election. He's going to make it about democracy, character, and recovery. And Trump wants the election to be about revenge, wages, and saving civilization. But the Democrats and the media will blast voters with a fire hose of lies. And no doubt about it, uh, our, our border is secure. Binomics is has worked so well. Wages continue to grow faster than inflation. More than 12,000 pages of bank records and 2,000 suspicious activity reports. None of it links to Joe Biden. Lying works. It's how Biden won the last election. It's the only way they win. Checking accounts are getting whacked. The stock market's flat. Mortgage rates near 8%. Rent, insurance, gas, food. Folks are getting hammered. The media mind games will be off the charts. The wild card is Biden falling. If he falls again, it's Newsom's shot. Under any circumstances at all, yes, yes or no, will you ever, ever accept the Democratic nomination to run for president in 2024 on, under any circumstances at all? That's a... Yes or no? I, I, I'm looking forward. I was just in Chicago with the DNC. I don't need the long answer. I want the yes or no answer. To, to President Biden's uh, inauguration. Will you accept it under term? any circumstances? Of course not. It's, it's, a, it's a hypothetical. Yes or no? That, 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 no. No, because under it's any circumstances. It's ridiculous. Joe Biden's our you president. You called me ridiculous. Joe Biden. Is I'm going to make you pay for my in and out burger. Joe Biden won the debate tonight, and you're right about in and out burger. They haven't pulled the ripcord yet. But Newsom's a threat. 
and it triggers an identity politics circular firing squad on the left if that happens, that the Democrat Party cannot survive. Joining me now, Fox News contributor and former Democratic presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard. So take a look at Trump, that Joe Biden, that corrupt vulture preying on the heart and soul of middle class America while his family gets paid. That framing right there is what won him in 2016 and is the ticket this time. I don't see any way Joe Biden defends that. Uh, first of all, Jesse, you're right. He, he, uh, President Donald Trump has painted a very powerful picture, a very impactful picture about what is really happening and, and who he's running against here. You also answered it earlier about how Joe Biden is going to try to counter that is through continuing to lie. And that's what I saw in this speech that he gave today was two things. Number one, how little he really thinks of democracy and how little he thinks of us the American people, that we will sit there and continue to buy this lie that he is committed to democracy when he is doing the exact opposite. So my message to President Joe Biden is, if you want to tell us you're committed to democracy, show us. And here's three things you can do right now. Number one, let the American people decide who they want to be our next president commander in chief by stopping all of your efforts to get Donald Trump off the ballot. Number two, stop demonizing half of the American people as extremists just because they're supporting your political opponent. And number three, apologize to the American people and stop all of your efforts to try to censor the voices of those who say things that you don't want to hear. I would make it about extremism. Flip it. Say, Joe, having boys and girls locker rooms is extreme. Partial yes. birth abortion is extreme. Arresting yes. your opponent is extreme. Inflation at crazy levels, that's extreme. This spending, this green garbage is extreme. That's how you do it. It's a whether or not Donald Trump can pull it off. Kenny? Uh, you know, he has always been, whether people like him or not, no one can say that Donald Trump does not speak his mind and deliver a very clear message. He doesn't play the politician games many of which we saw on the debate stage last night. He speaks directly to the American people of what's on his heart and on his mind. I believe he can deliver that message very effectively. What happened last night, Tulsi? Did you watch? <laughs> I watched the first, I don't know, 30 or 40 minutes, and I was watching with a friend of mine who is not political at all. She is the independent-minded American voter who's not affiliated with either party. She's like, she hasn't watched a, a presidential debate since I ran for president. She's like, my gosh, this is underwhelming. This looks like a bunch of high school kids bickering. I'm going to bed. Middle school kids. Yeah. And if you need <laughs> any lessons in debating, you throw a punch and you see if it lands and if you see if your opponent is dizzy. You don't just go da 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 the whole night long. You're well, not you know, connecting that way. Well, yeah, that's true, Jesse. But it's also, if they're so focused on punching each other, they're forgetting the most important people who are who are watching this saying, hey, why aren't you talking to me as the American voter sitting at home? Why aren't you talking about the things that I care about and having that substantive back and forth so I can see where do you guys agree? Where do you disagree? These guys were, were more focused on beating each other up right. and the sport of political theater than they were about actually speaking to those of us at home on our couch watching them. You're right. They didn't connect with the people on the no. couch. They didn't connect with the people on stage and they didn't connect on Biden. Yeah. Man, that guy's vulnerable. Tulsi yes, Gabbard, thank you very much. I remember you, what Jesse. you did on that debate stage. <laughs> I that's, focused on substance that, <laughs> every six and a half minutes they gave me. That's right. That's right. Have a great night, Tulsi. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.